All right, I'm going to shoot a short video explaining the A2DP volume application. I've already got it installed from the Android market right here. I'm showing you on an emulator just for simplicity. Um, I'll show you some uh, details on an actual device here in a minute. So first, when you open up the application, uh, you'll just see three simple buttons on the top. This one's already been run, so it found uh, car dock and home dock. These are special devices. Uh, that uh, use the Google user interface for those two items so that you can get the same functionality of automatically connecting a Bluetooth device, capturing location, and so forth uh, without even using a, a Bluetooth device. Um, first thing you want to do if you ever have just recently paired devices, make sure your Bluetooth is on. Click the Find Devices. If I click this on, on this, you'll see a notice come up saying that I don't support Bluetooth because this emulator doesn't. Um, there's also a button over here that says stop service right now, and you can see the notification icon of the service running. If I click stop, that icon goes away. It'll say service stopped. What that means is it won't, uh, the application will be removed from resident memory and it won't uh, function at all. So when devices connect, disconnect, uh, nothing will happen. So this is handy if you want to, you know, pair a computer or something like that, or while you're pairing a new device, stop the service, uh, and then when you get done, start it again. <coughs> and you'll want to find devices uh, after pairing new devices as well. So I'll pull you, go into an example of some of the features within here. So in this example, it's a, a car dock, so it emulates a MAC address of one. You don't need to really worry about this stuff. You can change the settings by device. So I can edit it, edit the name. Prior to uh, gingerbread, or not even gingerbread, actually, prior to honeycomb, uh, you couldn't name specific devices. So if you had three devices of the exact same type, the name would come across the same, and you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So this allows you to name each of them separately. In this case, I don't need to, to rename the device. Um, here I've selected the capture location on disconnect. So when this device sees a disconnect, then my application, A2DP Volume, will capture the GPS location or Wi-Fi location or best location, depending on what you've set up in your preferences to support. Um, <coughs> and it'll give it a certain timeout. I'll get into that in a minute on how quickly it can capture the location. Uh, disconnect Wi-Fi when Bluetooth connects. I've got this unselected here. I could select it just by doing that. Uh, what this does is when it sees you connect to a Bluetooth device, it'll disconnect your Wi-Fi. There's been some problems with uh, music stutter if you have your Wi-Fi connected uh, when you're streaming Bluetooth. So if you're driving through town, you're streaming Bluetooth in your car, it sees a, a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, when it does that, it'll give little stutters in your music. So this will prevent that from happening. It also saves a little battery power while you're driving. You don't need your Wi-Fi enabled. Um, you can, by device, enable reading text messages or not. So if I get an SMS message, and that's the only type of te text message currently supported, uh, if you get a text message while you're driving, it'll read it out to you. Today, it's a one-way support. It doesn't allow you to send texts with it. That kind of is missing the point, in my opinion. You shouldn't be texting while driving to begin with. But in this case, you can at least hear uh, the message that was sent to you, um, which is, which is kind of handy in some situations. <coughs> okay, I have this one set for the primary function of the app, hence the name. I have this set to adjust the media volume when it sees a connection of this device. And you can set the volume wherever you want. In this case, I set it all the way to the max. Uh, most Bluetooth streaming devices using A2DP want the volume all the way to the max. That's not always true, though. In some cases, you want to adjust it just a little below the max to prevent overdriving the device. And I'll show an example of one of those a bit later. I can also set the in-call volume when I connect. So it's possible that when talking on the phone you don't have the volume adjusted all the way up, or maybe you do have it adjusted all the way up when you're using the device. But then when you connect to a hands-free device, you need to adjust the volume to a different place. 
uh, and this allows it to automatically do that. So when it connects to this device, it'll set the volume wherever you put it. In this case, I have it maximized. I can also start an application on Connect automatically. <coughs> and this this uh, right here shows what I've selected, but there's uh, quite a rich feature set. You can launch Pandora Radio. You can pick one of your home screen shortcuts. You can create a special shortcut, for instance, to a music playlist or something like that. Or you can choose an application that you want to launch. Maybe you have a speedometer application. Some people use this for a traffic radar application, for instance. Or I can clear the app selection. You can also, if you're particularly nerdy, go in and make a custom intent. Um, and if you know what intents are, then, then uh, by all means dive in and have fun. Uh, that allows you to actually broadcast to Android a specific set of instructions. Um, I have some more documentation on the website about custom intents and how those work. And then I can clear the app selection here so nothing, nothing launches. <coughs> The next thing I can do is I can also connect a Bluetooth device. Now this emulator doesn't support any, so if I click this I just get none. None just clears the selection. This uh, Force App Restart is used with this Start App on Connect. So in some cases you want the app to reinitialize and begin again. In other cases you can just resume the app. It really depends on the application that you're running. Um, in most cases from Froyo and up, so Android 2.2 and up, this uh, Force App Restart doesn't actually even work. Um, it just depends on the application and what it supports. Okay, so in here I've, I've edited one of my devices, and now I click the Save, and it'll save the changes that I've made to that. Notice that TTS Ready comes up. That means the text-to-speech uh, engine has been initialized properly and it's running. Okay, another thing you want to do is take a look at the preferences. So here's where you set the application defaults. Up at the top I have start at boot, and I have that selected, so that means my application will run every time I boot up my device. Uh, that's an option. If you don't want that to happen, of course, you can turn that off. However, if you turn that off, the service won't run, and none of the features in the application will run. Um, show pop-ups. I can reduce the amount of pop-ups. So if you get pestered by all the messages coming up saying it's connected, it's disconnected, it's adjusting the volume, whatever, you can uh, disable the showing of the pop-up so it kind of quiets down the amount of messaging it sends you. It doesn't turn everything off, but it turns most things off. This uh, notify in foreground. This is important if, especially if you have a device that doesn't have a lot of RAM. If you have less than a gigabyte of RAM, you have a lot of applications running. Um, if you don't notify in the foreground, the, this application could get killed. For instance, you might see, it'll see the connection to your Bluetooth device, adjust the volumes, but then get killed in the middle. And if that happens, it won't adjust the volumes back, it won't capture the location. Um, none of that stuff will happen. So it's best to notify in the foreground. Um, this will put the little icon up on the toolbar right now it's off because when I'm in the preferences it disables the service. But you'll notice when I exit this the notification will come back up again. Um, <clears throat> again, that really bothers some people having a notification up there. It just depends on which bothers you more. Having the application potentially get killed in the middle and not perform its primary function or having a notification icon up on the uh, notification area. So I allowed that to be a preference. You can set it whichever way you please. I would strongly recommend keeping it on if you want the application to work properly. But if you test it and it seems to work properly for you without that on there, uh, by all means you can turn it off. Uh, use local file storage. If you don't want your location data stored on the SD card, you can use this local file storage, in which case it actually stores it right within the um, operating area of Android. Some people uh, didn't like having the information on the SD card. They liked having their SD card clean for whatever reason, so I made that a, an option. In most cases, you, you don't need that. You can just use the SD card to store your location data. This will uh, be the space that's used to store the location data.